Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the month of February. I don't know where the month of January went, but it seemed to have disappeared. Uh, Janice, would you do roll call, please? President Davidson. Present. Vice President Ricketts. Present. Secretary Kincaid. Present. Treasurer Hahn. Present. Director Argot. Present. Director Hector. Present. Director Sauvé. Present. Director Setzer. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And just so you know, Ryan is on the phone this morning. Uh, therefore, I'll call the meeting to order. It is 9.32. Will you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The first item is the approval of the January 7th draft Board of Directors meeting, uh, which you all have in your package. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to approve them. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Then the Federation Board of Directors meeting minutes from January 6th are approved. That will take us into our manager report. And if you will notice, uh, we have a new gentleman sitting at the table. Uh, as Ginger is out of town with family vacation, so I'll turn to you, Matt, to do the land trust manager report. Thank you, sir. Good morning, everyone. So as we roll into the new year, um, the report is for January, and we're going to go over some gym numbers. Uh, we've seen a 16% increase in participation over the month prior, uh, mainly due to New Year's resolutions. We'll see how long that lasts. The South Club gym had a, uh, an increase in 20%. Uh, we've also done nine orientations, so for those of you that are a little tentative to get back in the gym, or you have friends and family who may be tentative to get back, they do have some orientations that are complimentary to get you integrated into that. Uh, Spawn Salon was our best month since COVID, uh, brought in $23,150 in revenue. Food and beverage, um, total South Club patrons served 7,559, of which approximately 18% were port go pickups. So that continues to be a popular um, offering here, and that is not going to be going away. I get a lot of questions on if that's going to change. I, I say post-COVID, dear Lord, who knows what that means anymore, but uh, that's going to continue for us. Um, total South Club sales for January, $139,927. And LaPert sales up here at the North Clubhouse, $4,900. The average cover at the North Clubhouse is $3.39. The hottest selling item, no pun intended, is coffee. So, as we continue on um, with our project updates for 21-22, uh, Victoria and the team are continuing with the South Club pool deck expansion project. The Tiki Bar renovation, phase one is underway. The earthwork and slab and paper demo are completed. We are transitioning to an underground plumbing installation and wall removal as rebar and footer installation. Um, the permit is 90% through Hillsborough County approval process. From a timing standpoint, we're all sitting and waiting like we always would be um, regarding the county. Barring delays due to labor shortages and supply chain issues, we are hoping for a second quarter completion of this portion of the project. Um, speaking of delays, the South Club 25-ton HVAC unit replacement has been delayed by a vendor due to labor shortages and supply chain issues. Um, we are currently awaiting the official install date. North Club, the complex shuffleboard, shuffleboard courts. Thus far, resurfacing is completed on eight of the courts, and the remaining eight are undergoing the resurfacing and restriping as we speak. So good news, the 2020 elevator is fully operational as of February 1, and we really appreciate your um, understanding and accommodating during this necessary repair, which we'll go into some of the expenditures later. Um, the estimated delay um, for the new tram that was scheduled to be in this budget year has now been pushed back to the end of 2022. Um, we were told October, November, so we'll expect it in 2023. The main clubhouse pool heater replacement has been completed and the pool is open for resident usage. 
and on to some fun. So the Winter Series sales are going extremely well. We're getting a lot of really great feedback on the shows. Absolute Queen, Motown Magic, Abacadabra, Back Home Again, Let's Hang On, Forever 4% have sold out. Our next coming shows with availability are California Surf. I just checked, we have less than five tickets remaining for that. Um, the other show with avail uh, availability is the Kingston Trio on March 28th. Because of the popularity of these shows, um, we've actually added two additional shows. Scott's been working hard and he's got, um, let's see, the Alter Eagles, which is an Eagles tribute band. I see what they did there, very nicely done. And the Mark Anthony band will be a tribute to Billy Joel. So these shows are gonna be April 8th and April 11th. Stay tuned for updated ticket purchasing information as we get you guys ready. We are, we're gonna try to avoid some lock lines at the box office because we anticipate these will be popular events. So just hang in there with us uh, and expect an announcement of how to purchase very soon. COVID testing. So as of January 28th, we have 906 residents that have been, residents and potentially guests, that have been tested in the Kings Point Clubhouse, of which there has been 93 that have tested positive. Some of those were multiple positives, meaning a resident may have come in on a Monday and retested on Friday, um, and technically both of those count as positive. What we have seen in the past two weeks is a major decline in positivity rate. So we were, there are a couple weeks there that we were hitting about 17%, positivity rate, and that was a lot of the multiple folks coming back. Um, this past week and even Friday, we were at about a 4% positivity rate. So hopefully this, this wave is continuing to dissipate. Um, our next testing date is actually today from 9 to 2 in the Ripple Room. So if you have any friends and neighbors that may have been exposed that would like a little peace of mind or family out of town, we can accommodate them down in the Ripple Room today. Quick reminders, on the ongoing Queen's Luncheon is the first Wednesday of each month, the Gents Open Air Market is the first Wednesday of each month. Uh, today, if you're looking for something to do, the Activities Open House will be in the theater from 10 to 2. We have monthly line dance, February 6th, monthly dinner on February 28th, and our garage sale lottery, the ever popular garage sale lottery, will be on February 11th at 9 a.m. in the Veterans Theater. We also have Brandon Ballet coming here on Sunday, April 9th, so we're trying to keep you as busy as possible if you want to be. Um, tram continues to be as busy as we've seen coming out of COVID. Um, they've done about 2,000 miles in January. Total ridership is over 2,200. Um, gate security received about 10,000 calls in the month of January. And the security patrol um, drove throughout the community about 2,000 miles. We've had 22 different incident reports, of which I'll read you two of, of kind of the most interesting or of the most major that you'd want to know. A resident arrived at the front gate house at 6.30 a.m. to notify security of a damaged car stopped in the grass near Fox Hunt and Kings Drive. Upon arrival, security observed tire tracks in the grass, indicating that the vehicle had been driving the wrong way when they knocked down two street signs and fortunately missed the fire hydrant by approximately half a foot. The tire tracks continued up to where the car was located, with both the spectrum and telephone junction boxes hanging from the undercarriage of the car. <laughs> The disoriented driver was in the car and stated he was looking for a drugstore. <laughs> Needless to say, security called 911 and Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office and an ambulance arrived within a few minutes. On a, <laughs> yeah, I can't, can't make it up, but um, a call was received from a resident concerning their neighbor. After security attempted to check on the neighbor by performing a wellness check, um, no contact was made. Um, the son was called. The son gave permission to enter the home along with the door pass code, allowing security and the neighbor to enter. The resident had fallen and was not able to get up. Assistance was given to the resident to help them follow up from security, recommending a call to the squad for medical evaluation. <laughs> the resident refused the recommendation for medical evaluation from the squad, and the son received a follow-up uh, notification of the situation. I think the most important thing here is this is just another reminder of how great of a community we have, that the friends and neighbors are tuning in to whom they seen, who they haven't seen, and it's just another uh, indication of how lucky we are to be here. A couple of questions for you. Uh, the COVID testing, you said 906 residents have been tested. You said 906 tests have been administered. 906 either residents or their guests. So 906 tests have been administered. Yeah, I can't confirm if they're residents. You know how many residents Correct. versus, because you had mentioned some people had double tests. So. Correct. So it's a total of 906. Correct. I know for a fact I've spoken with a number of, of folks who have had family members coming in from out of town, but they didn't want to integrate into their household before they took the test and got the results within a couple hours. So those type of situations occurred. Okay. 
Uh, in who is ever on the phone, could you mute your phone, please? Um, in regard to your notables, uh, fortunately, those electrical boxes and spectrum boxes were there because I think it's what stopped that car. Uh, if anybody drove down Kings Boulevard, it was in the Bedford area, and I think that car stopped. Uh, probably 10 to 15 feet away from going into one of the units. So uh, we're the residents and was very fortunate that that car did not continue going on uh, because it would have hit that unit. It was not that far away from the unit. So uh, I appreciate you noting it because I know everybody wanted to know. We assumed they were going the wrong way, the way the signs were bent down. They were going the wrong way. Uh, the other thing is, I received notification from a resident regarding grab bars and the showers in the South Club that they are only in the handicap. Would it be possible to put grab bars in the other showers uh, to assist residents uh, who would utilize the showers in the ladies' room? It's definitely possible and something we'll do. Not only at the South Club, but we'll also implement that there. Okay. <laughs> uh, who's, who's ever on the the call in bridge? We don't need to hear you pounding. Uh, could you mute your phone, please? As we do have a board member on the phone who is attending the call by a conference call. Thank you. Does the board have any other questions? Thank you, Matt. What is the um, what is the status on the hot tub at the South Club? It's not working. I'll have to look into that for you. Oh, okay. I'll try to get your answer by the time this meeting's over. Do you have anything on that, Victoria? I know that we were performing repairs. I'll check and see if it's up and running yet. Okay, so it has been put in for to have the repair. Mm -hmm. Repairs are okay. in progress. If not already done. Right. Answer your question, Janice. Janice? Yeah. Yeah. Then I will turn the meeting over to Heath Wilking for a managed report uh, from her service. Thank you, sir. Good morning, everybody. It's hard to follow up the, uh, the incident at the drugstore, uh, but uh, just, just a note on, especially with the, the, uh, the call out for the person that's uh, not, not seen outside their home, another important reason why to make sure as, as you're going through annual meetings and you have new members, make sure they update their emergency contact forms. It helps us out, it helps you know, Matt and his team out. Um, the guards, uh, just a, it's a prime example of how well those work when they're updated. Uh, so this is the major report for first service for the month of January, on the January stats. And real quickly, again, all the uh, board members up here on the phone are owners of their own condominium parcels or HOA uh, dwellings and are all paid up on their dues. So we do check that, make sure they're paid up. <laughs> Uh, quickly, co operations under COVID, go through the administration functions. Uh, there were 53 transfer of sales for the month of January. There were 31 leases completed. Uh, we had 16 document requests. So again, we do notary services inside the office. If you have something, feel free to pop up and uh, we'll get notarized for you. We took about 2,800 phone calls, did 854 pest control appointments, and had just over 1,000 walk-ins. We did 42 one-on-one -on -one orientations with new homeowners. Again, we, we updated about 224 emergency contact forms. Uh, the CAMS did 39 alteration requests, issued 23 violations, processed 181 invoices and have and drew five new contracts. A couple quick notes on the, on the bulk contracts and the committees. Um, down to trash, we are in the first week of FCC. There's been some uh, uh, New involvements with them chopping up the week on the dumpster pickup, which is not logistically smart. And I think they realize that. Um, the plan is to go to Wednesday and Saturdays. This week they kind of did Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So it's, it's been a little bit hectic. I spoke to the account manager several times. And I believe uh, Victoria's team has had similar problems with their trash pickup. So I do know they hired the driver from Waste Connection that picks up the dumpster. So hopefully there's some continuity there and some understanding where the roads are. Hopefully everybody on the residential side has seen 
the new white trucks in there and, and everything's running as smoothly as possible. Um, if you have a dumpster issue, um, if it's not being picked up or you see something, just please let me know. You can either call your CAM or call me directly or email me directly, we'll get on that. If it's a residential issue, uh, we recommend calling the Hillsborough County uh, Solid Waste Customer Service Line. That's at the 813-272-5680 or on the Hillsborough County website as well. So uh, just trying to get them uh, started on the right foot. So any, any information, feedback is great. Uh, quickly for, for Spectrum, even though some of their poles were damaged in incidents, um, they're still running along. We are working with uh, the, I call them the TV and Internet Committee of One to look into the Spectrum contract. It does renew in 14 months. So at the end of uh, March 31st, 2023, that contract is, uh, is up for renewal. So we started to look at other providers and bring some information out to the board and see how we will progress through that. Landscaping, uh, we had a, had a great presentation last week about the landscaping um, and the new contracts. So we were just waiting back for two signatures on that from two of the vendors and then we'll get that over for, uh, for signatures and, and progress through the renewal start date of April 1st. Um, we also had a, uh, a palm fertilization that, again, we're just waiting to finalize that contract. That will start in April as well. Again, their first palm fertilization for ground will be in May. There will still be a full one completed in the months of March with Russell's Landscaping. Uh, last week's presentation, uh, the, the Landscape Work Talk presentation was actually all focused on the palm and hardwood, so I appreciate Liz and her committee putting the, putting the piece together and Ryan presenting some of the contract uh, then and now, so I think it was a great a great presentation. And mulch, we are getting ready to start the spring mulch program. Again, there's a, about a dozen associations that chose to do spring installation, so we'll be reaching out to those and getting that uh, started. And quickly, landscape work orders for January, about 38. And there's a mixture of uh, uh, regular hedge pruning and work order requests for and just quickly, I want to make an announcement that the end of February, on Thursday, February 24th, uh, those new board members, uh, all the camps are talking about after annual meetings, but we have a board certification class. Um, we got it held on Thursday, February 24th. It's going to be inside the Veterans Theater. It starts promptly at 9.30, and will be hosted by uh, Webb Milton from Bush Ross, and there'll be uh, some nice breakfast provided. So if you haven't signed up for that yet, let me know, give me an email, give your camera an email, we'll get you on the schedule and uh, get you in there. And it's uh, it's one of those nice classes to take and to have and uh, get a lot of good information. That's all I have. In regard to the certification, the board certification, it is a state requirement that board members uh, do go through a certification course. There is two ways to do it. You do the certification, you have a certification class. Well, you can do it online or in person, or you can certify with a letter that you've read all your documents, you completely understand your role as a board member, and you're, and you're signing, you're yeah. signing off on but that. But it is a requirement. To it is a requirement to do one of those. Yeah. We encourage the in-person workshop. You just get a lot of good information, especially if you're brand new on, on what's expected uh, from the state as a board member. So. I'd like to make a comment, if I may, Jeff. Um, I go to those every year because things change and that it's a good way to get caught up and, and stay refreshed. So I strongly recommend it. You are 100% correct, Liz. Uh, staying abreast of the requirements for being a board member and what your fiduciary and legal responsibilities are as a board member is very important. Don't need to get yourself or your association in trouble uh, by violating things that should be very easy to just follow track of. So I would agree with you. Uh, with that, we will do committee reports. Liz, do you have anything? Uh, no, not really. No, no, nothing to report today. Dan, anything? No. Janice. I, I do know that Janice is working to set up initial meetings uh, with the insurance agent to start getting quotes and pricing from different insurance companies, correct? Yes. Tom, anything on tree and 
Excuse me, landscaping? Nothing today. Okay. Barbara, anything on CPC? No. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> that will turn it over to Amley's Treasurer's Report for the third quarter. Thank you, Jack. Um, yes, the third quarter ending, so April 1st through the end of December 2021, nine-month period. The, uh, this is the same report I gave at the membership meeting uh, that was just uh, we just had. The total assets uh, as of December 31st is $554,572, with $497,364 in the restricted funds uh, total. Uh, that also then, of course, left the 57208 in uh, total members' equity. The, um, the receipts and disbursements, and I, I'm reporting on total receipts and total disbursements. And uh, for, for the accountants out there, people who want to know the specifics, we, we only recognize revenues as the amounts that are expended. The rest... At, if, we're, if we get revenues over the amount that we spent, we don't recognize those as revenues. Those are put in reserves and also held for future expenditures. This is done the same as you do in your association. It's done so that we don't pay tax on that. So I'm reporting for, again, for ease of and simplicity, and so you all know the total receipts and disbursements. Uh, our budgeted uh, assessments receipts is right on target. Uh, 61,801, uh, just basically as budgeted. Other receipts, 60,325, most of that is transfer fees that we have received. Um, very small amount of interest uh, also is in that, um, that number. The uh, administrative, um, again, the operating, now operating disbursements, the administrative funds is well below budget, um, uh, $811. Uh, is all that was spent uh, so far. Utilities, we spent $1,050, and that's again well, well under budget. The contracts is actually a negative number, negative 736. This is because we received uh, from, let me back up, the 1902 building is used by the Federation, but it's also used by the master and by the COA. And the master and COA pay a portion of the operating costs for that building. They have, they reimbursed, um, reimbursed the Federation for last year's amounts. This year's contracts are a lot less. We're paying less money for, um, for the janitorial services and, their, and those things. So it's, a, it's actually a net of a negative 736 in the contracts account. So um, then the, on the next page, our reserve accounts, the reserve totals are landscape uh, reserve fund, we have $50,000, as well as the grounds cleanup fund, $50,000. And that money is there in case it's needed, in case of um, uh, hurricane damage and just whatever, if we need, need money to, to do that, which we have needed in the past. The insurance deductible fund is very healthy at 132992 balance. Uh, we've only dispersed 10759 for nine months. That's fantastic compared to the last few years. Um, and then this means that, um, of course, accidents do happen, but this also means that you are all taking care of your units. Uh, you're turning off water when you leave. You're making sure the fans, bathroom fans are off when you leave for, for an extended period of time, things like that. So, so continue to take care of your units. And so you don't have claims. The legal fund has a balance of twenty-five thousand, uh, which is required by AC one. The professional services fund uh, balance is thirty thousand five hundred seven. So far, we've spent one hundred thirteen thousand three ninety-five on professional services, uh, mainly legal expenses. Um, the receipts in that was thirty-seven thousand six eleven. So we are still receiving some uh, receipts in, in that fund. The contracts fund balance is 43,161, and we've spent 28,500. 
uh, this year, and that is for the two fertilizations of palms that we have done. In the future, we won't have to pay that on the contract funds because the new landscape contract and the new tree and palm contract um, have been uh, redesigned so the tree contract contractor grow will be applying all well three fertilizations to all the palms um, and the community promotions fund balance is 33,772 we've spent 10,135 so far in community promotions um, and uh, again that's a total of 497.364 in our reserve so that's my report. Any questions? Yes, I have a question, and I do not mean to blindside you, Alan. But as you were going through the report, you were discussing the uh, expenses for the 1902 building. Uh, the 1902 building truly belongs to the land trust, and I believe those leases are with the land trust. Shouldn't right. these finances be under the land trust finances, seeing basically those revenues should go to the land trust? And maybe Keith or Matt can answer that question. Well, I'll, I'll let them answer, but I think all the money, uh, since the, the Federation paid, all these are paying the land trust for the use of that, so the money kind of go, has gone to the Federation. But yeah, Keith or Matt. Me and, me and Matt actually met yesterday. Um, about the 1902 building, so there's going to be some stuff shifted back over to the land trust as the uh, management company for those buildings. So they'll take on those expenses and then issue out uh, the reimbursement checks or, or the invoices to each of the parties. So, so it really should be in the land trust funds. That's right? the that's the design plan that you know we've kind of come up with. And, and okay, I, I you mentioned it before and it didn't put into my. Mind, but this morning when you were mentioning, going, well, wait a minute, that's a, a land trust lease with the master and the COA and the federation. It should be in the land trust revenue. No, you're you're absolutely right. And before then, Ma Bell had done the the distributions and, and recorded and, and looking at that, and uh, we all looked at. And I thought this isn't right, and turned it over to Ginger because the land trust should be doing that. In fact, in and Matt just, just informed me of their meeting that because I turned it over to you to work on that, so they are working on that and they're going to get that all done correctly. There, there are some times where we don't have individual previous conversations uh, amongst ourselves, so I didn't mean to blindside no. you with that. It just came right. into my mind when you were going over the financial report and it's best that we get it corrected and make sure it's done. And Matt and Keith, thank you for your work on it. I appreciate it. And I, it's glad to know we're ahead of it to curb on that particular issue. Jeff, I have a point of clarification. Um, it's Browns. The fertilization uh, amendment was uh, made to the Browns contract, not grow. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, he's correct. It's Brown. Correct. That, Rose, that's Rose a former contractor. Right. And the Brown contract is not a new contract. Uh, it is a three-year contract that is uh, has already been in place. And adding the fertilization to that contract was an amendment to the existing contract. So we did not approve a new contract there. But we did with landscaping. We just approved the amendment. Just approved the amendment. Yes, sir. Uh, I know you folks get tired of listening to me talk, so I'm going to forego a president's report because I think the board basically has kept you informed of what is going on. And I will move to open forum. And Kurt, where are you? Uh, stay where you are for a minute, Kurt. I just want to ask you a question. Uh, we are going to discuss, because you did sign up, we are going to discuss the growth settlement and what that entails and what it's about. Uh, at that time, I will be more than glad as the board is entertaining a motion on that settlement for you to speak on it, if you don't mind. Uh, in regard to the palm and tree, uh, if you want to do it at the end of the meeting or if you want to do it now, it's up to you. I'd like to do it right now. All right. Um, is this one? You hear me? Yep. 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 I'm Kurt Velasco. I'm president of Oakley Green. And um, I want to thank all the board members and committee members for 
for their work. It's all volunteer work. I appreciate it. I understand. Um, we got a notice that our palms were going to be trimmed in January. First thing Monday morning, I started getting emails from my residents saying, well, where, when are they going to trim ours? It appears nobody came in January to do Oakley Green. Exactly. Nobody came in December to do Oakley Green. I have fronds that are dead and brown, hanging straight into the ground for two months. I have fully developed seed plots. I have seeds. To the credit of First Service, somebody came yesterday and did some trimming. So I appreciate that. I'm told, well, we're done for January. See you in February. So I appreciate First Service coming yesterday and doing some. I still have the fronds behind the units still hanging down to the ground. So maybe in February we'll get them trimmed. And now I keep hearing about, we're working out the details of the contract. We're about to enter the second year of the contract. We're still working out details. It seems that we have five days allotted. That's 40 hours a week, 112. That's 20 minutes in association. That's a little tough. So I'd like to see something done about this trimming because otherwise I will have to hire a landscaper to come and trim the palms, and I will send the bill to the Federation. Or I will seek legal counsel, and we will stop our payments for that month for services not rendered. So I'd like to see that taken care of. Now, as to the grow contract, I don't know any of the details of it. We'll just, you're going to discuss that later. I would just request that if there are funds to be returned as part of that settlement, they come back to the association so we can take care of our palms. Thank you. Kurt, in regard to funds being returned, we are prohibited of returning any funds back to the associations uh, by the bylaws of the association, uh, of, of the federation. So we would be prohibited from returning funds back uh, but it, there is no funds coming back, so I will explain and we will explain the no settlement to you. Uh, Liz and uh, Keith, I'm going to ask if you'd like to respond to Kurt regarding the tree and pot. I'm, lo I'm looking for answers for both of you. So, Unfortunately, I don't have any answers. Um, we talked about this. Uh, it's been a systemic problem, and uh, Kurt has, is right on target with some of the associations not being serviced. And the oversight of that is Ryan's and Kate's to be sure that all of this is being done. So I'm going to pass the buck to you, Keith. I know uh, Kurt and myself, we've had a couple conversations about this, especially last week, so it's... Uh... I know it's something on, on the table to try to correct and, and improve. Um, I know the backs of yours did completely get missed, especially in January. I do know that they were through your associations each of those months. And I know, again, misses were done, and uh, we're trying to correct that. We were able to get some of the stuff addressed yesterday. So I say work in progress, but you know, it, just like with landscaping, there's always items that come up. You're working with you know, live growing trees. Um, so we're trying to make sure we can get those addressed and make sure there's enough time allotted for those crews to get through each association and just get those brown dead fronds and open seed pots. So. Well, to Kurt's point, um, you know, th this is not being uh, done monthly. And one of the reasons why the uh, maintenance piece was put into the contract well, so we, the associations did not have to go out and spend additional funds to get the um, the dead fronds trimmed between the regular uh, pruning cycle. And it's not happening. And well, so I'm not finished. I don't think they've done where aggressive where, where Kurt has to go hire somebody to touch every single one of those palm trees. Because before, as a, as a presentation was last week, you only have two palm tree trimmings a year. They came in, they cut, and in between that, places we're spending, 
lots of money to get all their trees touched. So this one, they're touching less trees, you know, less trees are, have brown fronds. So like I said, with the less aggressive trimming comes some complications on the maintenance schedule that was not foreseen. Well, you know, maybe we could get uh, Mr. Brown back down here. We've met with him before because okay. the, if that is your time allotment per association, you don't even get to drive from one end of the association to the next in that amount of time. Uh, are there enough personnel, and that's part of the contract, that enough personnel should be in here to honor the uh, conditions of the contract. So um, <clears throat> this has been going on for a while. We need, and so maybe we need to sit down with the, the personnel. The personnel has been corrected. Uh, we met with John earlier this week in person and, and, and drove around for a couple hours and, and, and addressed and talked about several things. Again, we, we have some trees that are in question. I think Janice is going to write that. Go ahead. Get ready to talk, say, give but, them my example. Yeah, you know, but for, for Janice's example, some of the trees, especially around signs and stuff, they're not getting trimmed in the back to the landscapers to get those. So there's some ambiguity still that's being addressed. In the, foot. That's being addressed in the new landscape contracts where the landscapers are now getting all the way up to 15 feet, which will hopefully help keep the appearance and, and, the, and the tightness down. So. Right, and, and as you said last week, people need to know and the contractors need to know what their responsibilities are because, and I don't know who's responsible to uh, follow that up other than you and Ryan, and I have a concern with Ryan going into associations and trimming uh, palm fronds. Uh, I don't think that's in his job description, but anyway. Well, I was, I, was, I was throwing trash in trash cans last night, so, uh, in the dumpster, so I mean, it's, it's part of what we'll, we'll do, whatever we gotta do to help out, and, He's more than qualified uh, with his arborist license to be able to trim uh, palm trees and oak trees. So. Uh, this seems to be an ongoing issue, and it has been an ongoing issue. And I would ask the Palm and Tree Committee to sit down with First Service and resolve the issue with Browns. Uh, the Palm and Tree Committee change the way uh, trees are currently trimmed on a monthly basis, number one, of only removing dead browns. Uh, number two, it was at the recommendation of the Tree and Palm Committee to go to once a year full trimming and monthly maintenance, uh, which the membership approved and I know there has been changes regarding the leadership for the Palm and Tree Committee, but I think the Palm and Tree Committee is, is their desire and their recommendations uh, work to, uh, with First Service to make sure the contract is uh, operating appropriately and what needs to be done to get it operating appropriately. I don't think it is all within uh, First Service's responsibility, I think, uh, part of this goes along with the Tree and Palm uh, Committee working with First Service to get this resolved. The uh, Palm and Tree Committee certainly has worked with First Service uh, in the past and will continue to do that. We're a committee and our committee provides recommendations and it's not, we do not have the skill to go out and assess uh, the trees. So yes, we will, and I think this conversation really needed to happen so that the people, our residents know that we're not ignoring it and that there is a problem and um, and has been a problem for a while and we need to address it. So get your calendar out, Keith. Well, and just back to Kurt's point, we've talked about working on the contract. I know the committee's even mentioned about taking away a full, the full pruning to help increase the maintenance time and, and things like that. So there are some stuff in progress that we're looking to transform the contract or move it in the right direction. I just want to make sure that we're managing expectations because, again, the last contract with GROW was only twice a year and there was, everybody's on their own in between. So again, we're trying to en enhance and improve what's going on here. I think we're heading in the right direction with the maintenance cycle. There's still some tweaks and, and timing and things like that that need to be done. And I know the committee's you know, up, up to it and we're up to it. And we'll make sure we can get it done. 
But it, as Kurt said, we're almost a full year into this and, and we're still stumbling. So we need to put our heads together right away. Thanks. Then I would expect that the Palm and Tree Committee and First Service will report back to us and the membership of what has been done uh, to remedy the situation. It has been going on for a long time, uh, ever since they did the initial trim and then started uh, doing the monthly maintenance that areas have been missed. We've received excuses from Brown on why areas have been missed. Uh, I understand that you can get a debt from a week after they go through uh, and clean up or do their monthly maintenance, you can have a debt from. Uh, but from my understanding from Kirk, uh, when things are not done month after month, that somebody should be overseeing getting them to follow the terms of the and I, and I truly believe the residents deserve an answer uh, on what we're doing. <clears throat> that will take us to new business. And the first item of new business, I will turn over to uh, Vesta. Board, you should all have a summary page. Um, dated February 4th. Two emergency repairs have been needed at the 2020 Center, which included a fractured sewer line as well as the replacement of three circuit boards for the elevator. VESTA notified the Federation Board on December 21st, 2021, that the main sewer line that comes from 2020 Center to the lift station was cracked. Due to this emergency, uh, a repair had to take place in which the 2020 Center would need to be closed with no resident usage to complete the needed repairs. These repairs were scheduled and completed on December 28th, 2021. To date, all plumbing is fully operational in the 2020 Center since the repairs have been completed. On December 22nd, in the month of fun, rolling brownouts occurred in the community and caused the circuit boards in the 2020 Center elevator to fail. Even though these circuits were protected by surge protection equipment, the three circuit boards were damaged and are irreparable. Vesta notified the Federation Board on December 22nd, 2021, and due to the elevator being part of the fire safety plan of the building, the replacement of the circuit boards was deemed an emergency and replacement parts were ordered. Due to the continuing supply chain shortages, one of the three circuit boards has been delayed. The vendor has arrived that they anticipate completion of the repair work by mid-February. That being said, this, this work was actually completed on February 1st. Um, the cost, so everything is up and operational as of this minute. The cost of these emergency repair expenditures are as follows. The sewer line repair is $9,400 and the elevator repair is $8,265. And because they exceed $5,000, they do need board approval. Yes, sir. Uh, even though you have a right to, on emergency repairs, have the emergency work done and then come back to the board. So I would move uh, for the board to approve the $9,400 expense for the sewer line repair and the $8,265 for the circuit board repair. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Then the uh, dollars have been approved for those two emergency repairs. The next item on the agenda is the approval of the gross settlement offer. Uh, I'll give you a little background on this. Uh, in February, uh, we advised Grow in February of last year, we advised Grow that we were terminating our contract with them as they could not meet the requirements from a financial perspective or a work perspective to do a yearly trimming of the ponds and a monthly maintenance. And also, uh, they wanted to increase the rates for the trimming of the oaks and ponds. Uh, substantially. Uh, we did speak to other companies and the membership approved the contract in February with Brown's Tree. Uh, upon notification that we were terminating the contract, which we had a right to do, 
uh, grow, contacted First Service and Keith, and basically said they wanted to come in in April, and they were going to do all the palm trimming and all the oak tree trimming, and they had a right to do so. Uh, anybody remembers, I don't think that we can get all of our palms and all of our oak woods trimmed within a 30-day period. We advised them, no, they could not come in, that we were not having any palm trees trimmed during the month of April. Upon our refusal, a mediation was set uh, with Grow. Uh, we advised them that the contract was, in the, the termination of the contract was in accordance with our contract. They said, well, we hired additional people, we have additional costs. Um, we considered the matter closed, and later in 2021, Grow sued the Federation for violation of terms of the contract and requested that we pay them the full value of the contract, which was about $139,000. Uh, our response to the contract uh, the lawsuit, and unfortunately anybody can sue you for anything, whether it is real or whether it is not. Uh, we respond to them that we were in full compliance with the contract, uh, set up a second mediation uh, that was attended by Keith and hosted by Webb. Uh, and I know people are going to find this funny. Grow was citing to the Federation case law from the Civil War <laughs> regarding contracts. It, it sounds funny, and, and I think to Keith and Webb, it was funny that this gentleman was trying to bring up case law from the Civil War, which involved government contracts. Uh, we made an offer to them at that time that we would settle for uh, $10,000 to make the lawsuit go away because of the cost of legal expense that we would incur just to continue with this lawsuit. Uh, they came down from $139,000 to forty, dollars uh, and said they would not accept the Federation's offer of approximately $10,000. <laughs> we originally started at five and moved up to ten try and get this to resolve so we could avoid legal expenses. Uh, they had requested a deposition of Keith, and I believe the deposition was set for the end, one of the weeks of the end of October. Uh, we gave them the dates. We never heard again from Grow. We went back to them and said, are you guys going to do this deposition or not? Uh, we'd like to get this closed. About three, four weeks ago, Grow came back to us and said, we will accept your settlement offer of $10,000. The Federation Board uh, contacted Webb and said, we're not willing to do $10,000. They've delayed it a few months. We've incurred additional expenses. Go back to them and tell them our settlement offer is now reduced to $7,500. Uh, Webb did his negotiation, and Grow has agreed uh, to a full settlement and release from their lawsuit and any liability to the Federation for $8,000, which uh, is much less than it would cost the Federation to continually drag this out, uh, take it to court, do depositions on this and we feel it is in the best interest of the Federation to pay Grow $8,000 to just go away. Um, so that is the background, Kurt, on what it is. Uh, unfortunately, uh, lawsuits are filed all the time. Uh, they become very expensive. You can't stop a company from filing a lawsuit against you. Uh, Grow was absolutely ridiculous in, in their basis for their lawsuit. Uh, unfortunately, you do have to deal with them, 
and the expenses from the um, legal counsel in fighting a lawsuit to this degree and doing depositions and uh, searching case law. Fortunately, we don't go back to the Civil War and we are doing case law. So I would recommend to the board to move that we uh, pay Grow in, for these in a settlement and release, which they have provided to us the $8,000 and resolve this issue with Grow. Did I have a motion for such? Second. Thank you, Tom. A second. Thank you, Janice. Uh, Kurt, do you want to discuss anything on this, or did that answer your questions? Because you did sign up for it. It was easier to explain what happened. Uh, is there any discussion amongst the board? Because I think we would be wasting our money to, if we didn't come back to settle uh, with them on this. Uh, legal expenses would be excessive. And I will call the question, seeing there is no discussion, all in favor of paying uh, the settlement agreed to of $8,000, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? And I will inform Webb that we will pay the $8,000. Unfortunately, just as a side note uh, to those present, is grow one, they came back to us in uh, January, uh, they wanted the payment prior to the end of January. We told them, no, it has to go before the board for approval. The board meeting is until February 4th. And as soon as the board approves it, we would see that uh, their payment was made to them. I've already spoken to Keith about how we can get a check issued to them rather quickly so we can get this matter closed because they are pushing for that settlement amount. Uh, it was good we went back to uh, Grow and said, no, we're not accepting $10,000 settlement offers off the table. We're lowering it. We're, you caused us two, three, four months delay. Uh, and I appreciate that Webb was able to get that settlement back down to $8,000. It was good work on his behalf. Uh, but I know Keith is lived a nightmare with Grow uh, and trying to deal with them as has Webb. But they had some attorney out of, I believe it was Bradenton, Naples, that just was like wet behind the ears and didn't understand what he was doing and didn't understand that the case law he wanted to cite had nothing to do with real contract case law. So unfortunately, I think Grow was led down a Act that they shouldn't have been let down. And that is what happens when people have a right to sue. Uh, with that, I will open up the floor for any good, any welfare announcements, if there are any. Yes, Dan, it wouldn't be a meeting, Dan, without uh, hearing from you. So, Dan, I look forward to our meetings because it's the only time I get to talk to you. And thanks, Treasurer of the T. Several months ago, I called Tico about a problem with the street lights. They never took any action. This is the end of a place north. Three or four weeks ago, I called them again. The street light was out completely. And he had, there's two street lights on the end of a place north and three on the end of a way. I called on a Monday. They called Wednesday and said it was taken care of. The next week, it was not taken care of. I called, the first time I called them, they said they had no record of me putting the call in. The second week, this time, they called me on a Wednesday again. They said there were no street lights on the end of the place and end of the way. I said there were street lights there. The numbers on them cannot be read. And then they said, oh, there's street lights here on private property. I thought the street lights were part of the, the road system here. So they came and they replaced the street light. And the next week, there were still two lights out on the Andover Way. So I called them the third week. 
They came and replaced the one at the corner of King's Boulevard, the one at the opposite end, which is very dark. They came uh, Wednesday, I think, or Thursday, Wednesday. And uh, I happened to be out there when the man from Tico was there. And you can't read any numbers on them. He said, I can't reach the light down uh, on in Dover Way. I said, if you go down there, back in between the two car forks down there, and you can reach the light. So I'm telling this guy that was his job, and I'm telling him how to do his job. So he backed up and was able to replace them. It, the, not, the street poles are so old that you can't read anything on them. So if anyone has a street light problem, and you, don't, you can't read the numbers, if it's King's Boulevard, I don't know who controls that, probably the master. But tell them it, it might be on it on private property versus the public property. They most likely, Dan, I would assume, have right away uh, for those street lights. And I do know that although the Federation has nothing to do with Tico and the street lights, it is difficult to get Tico unless you can read. Excuse me. Unless you can read the numbers they have on their their polls. Dan, uh, I, I pick on you about it's it's not a meeting, but I appreciate the uh, tenacity you had in continuing to push Tico uh, to get those lights fixed for you. Tico can be difficult to deal with at times and I'm glad that the problem was fixed, and uh, hopefully, the majority of those polls uh, numbers can be read. And I have one in front of my house, and I go, "How could I ever read this number if the light went out?" So. Well, the reason I brought it up here: if other associations have the problem, they need to know how to resolve the problem. And I and I appreciate the tenacity, Dan. I really do. Thank you. Any other? Comments, concerns? Uh, Doug Fayel with Tremont too. The legal expenditures they were doing seem to like ballooning up very high. The, when you mention when you touched on the legal expenditures, they seem really high. What, what are we doing? What color are we? It is, it is a matter of when you say really high, what were you specifically I'm, referring to? It seems to? like it's ballooning, ballooning, going up and up and up from previous. I, I will tell you that uh, the Federation budget that Alan covered actually went down for next fiscal year. Uh, it was, went down about 50%. Uh, and when you say the, the costs are going up and up, the costs for everything are going up oh, and up and up. But, yes, I, uh, I don't. I think the budget is basically almost stayed exactly the same uh, year over year. Am I not correct, Alan? Well, the total bottom line for the federation has has, has been about the same. Yeah, the federation board budget has been about the same year after year after year. It's just where the dollars, and I know it seems a a big dollar amount when you're looking at it. I think the total federation budget's like one hundred and sixty, hundred and seventy thousand dollars. Is that something like that? And most of that is covered up and transfer in from from the uh, transfer fees and standards. Schedule will start in section three, which you are in, and starting off with Manchester. That Monday we had that terrible wind, nobody expected them to show up. 
And then a week later, nothing happened, no show. And then a follow-up announcement came out, revising the schedule to start from section four. Now, in January, we never got touched by Brown to do anything on our farms. So we were hoping that we were the first ones to start with. Now, here we are in the first week in February, and nothing has been done in our association. So question one, why was the schedule changed from the original date? And now do I have to wait for another month to have the pumps done? Uh, again, the schedule is just kind of a general guideline of where they're going to start. I mean, we say section three, and, and then we kind of dictate it off of the work orders and things like that. And obviously, weather will change that. Um, I, I know personally they've been in your association each month. Um, so I, you know, I've seen them. I would invite you to so. come and I'll take a, you don't even have to get out of your car. You could just see what's handy. I, I understand that. Yeah. I, I just think. You're saying that they didn't come in there at all. I said, I, I've personally seen them and been with them in, in your association. Right. The same trees are still hanging. <laughs> well, if, yeah. there, if there's something, I'd be happy anyway, to come out. And I'm, I'll have you come out and meet and look at them if we can, yeah, we can address them. I'd love to see it. I'd like you to see it. And I don't understand why the schedule got changed like that. It seems like, you know, we're being punished or something. Thank you. I'll see you later, okay? If, if you notice, by rights, the agenda calls it good and welfare. The Federation Board has no desire not to allow residents to ask questions and speak. And although this is a good and welfare section, uh, we have basically, over the past year or so, opened it up for other residents' questions, such as the tree and palm, even though it's not on the agenda. So we do not mind uh, questions that, that come up to answer them. Okay, thank you. Uh, my name is Dick Bishop. I'm in Corinth, and although I'm not on the agenda, I wanted to plant a seed. Um, as our residents you know, have been here 10, 20 years, and then many of them have to leave because of health conditions or family conditions or a death in the family, but they may stay in the area. Their community is here at Kings Point. It's not Sun City. It's not their community system over there. So I'm, I'd like to plant a seed that we offer to our retiring uh, residents that have been here 10, 20 years, a chance to uh, continue their affiliation with the club, the uh, amenities, uh, their community is still here. And maybe a small fee, I don't know what, what the parameters are, I'd be glad to serve on a committee to study this. I know Sun City has... Uh, system like that, I don't know the King's Point has ever entertained that, but after a person has lived here for so many years, uh, I know if they're staying in an area, they'd like to continue that. I know if that were my case, I would. Anyway, I'd like to participate in, in studying that if, if the board would see fit. Thank you. Just, just to let you know, that is an issue that would have to go before the Rules and Rights Association, which is the what I would call the third leg of the stool that uh, oversees uh, King's Point, and I will be more than glad to, and I'm quite sure uh, Matt will pass it along to Ginger, and I will pass it along to the Rural Drug Association uh, board. Um, so could you, and hopefully the Rules and Drug Association boards can address that issue for you. Any other comments, questions, concerns? Seeing none, I will accept a motion to adjourn. All in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Meeting is adjourned.